Hello, good evening. It's day two of the Halifax Centenary Rugby League World Cup and after England's great victory over the champions Australia at Wembley yesterday, the competition has moved back to its northern roots. Tonight, Tonga were looking to upset New Zealand at Warrington. Today's also been a big day for First Division Keithley, who played host to Fiji against South Africa. We'll be hearing from our special guest. Match of the day has Gary Lineker. We've got our own Gary, but without the crisps. The Leeds and Great Britain star Gary Schofield will be reviewing the action. We're at Wilderspool, where Tonga lay down the challenge to one of the tournament favourites, New Zealand. A taste of the South Seas at Cougar Park in Keithley. Fiji weren't so laid back when the match with South Africa kicked off. And racing to victory, we reflect on England's winning start against Australia at Wembley. It's not quite as grand as Wembley, but tonight the Rugby League World Cup moved to Wilderspool, the home of Warrington, for New Zealand against Tonga in Group 2. Now, the Kiwis have many brilliant individuals, but often fail to fulfil their potential. Tonight, the ferocious Tongans promise to test New Zealand's World Cup credentials to the full. The commentators at Wilderspool, Terry Flanagan and Joe Lydon. These Tongan men travelled all the way around the world to play in this tournament. Their first World Cup entry having started the formation of the league over there in 1986 and really the development of these young athletes will delight the crowd this evening here at Warrington and I'm sure we're in for a, a, a cracker of a game. Tonga out of course, littered with a few big names as it were, players who've played in New Zealand, in Australia and here in England itself. Uh, but coupled with many of the younger players who are making a name for themselves on the world stage. In contrast, we see the New Zealand team littered with internationals, players of vast experience, again in England, Australia and New Zealand, players who are practically household names around the world. A look at the New Zealand team, captained by Matthew Ridge at fullback, Hoppy and Barnett on the wing, Barnett making his international debut this evening, Blackmore in the centre, a strong player, Namu at six, combining with Stacey Jones, also making his debut, but a very experienced pack there, with Kemp at 13, and Pongi at eight, should be leading the fray from the front. The Tongan side with Asaya Mon at fullback who plays for Halifax here in England and uh, by corner at three he plays for the whole club. Many youngsters in that team and we're going to keep an eye out for Gutenbal at 13, Hamono at 12 uh, with George Mann and Dwayne Mann the captain there at nine. It's New Zealand in the traditional black and white playing on the right hand side, kicking to the left, the Tonga in red and away we go with Matthew Ridge, a deep kick down into the Tongan 25. Yeah, some talent in the uh, New Zealand dugout, Henry Paul. It's important that these fellas keep the game for 20 minutes, Joe, and, and, and try and put some pressure on New Zealand. Yeah, they've got to take it to New Zealand. You know, we've, we've mentioned the experience that New Zealand have and the quality of players. Tonga, a little bit of an unknown quantity as far as we're concerned, but I'm sure they've got to match them in intensity. Big hit from Blackmore there. Rocked Asamon to his to his boots there, but to his credit, he's up, he's strong. He hasn't affected him too much, but a big hit from Blackmore. The number ten, New Zealand, Lowry slipping the ball, but he's away. Number seven there, Willie Walgram there, he's away. What a fantastic, still going strong, and he's unloaded to number three by corner, by corner. It's Tonga in the the half of New Zealand in the 22, looking to move the ball wide. Poor pass again, Dwayne Mann tidying up a little bit. Picks up to number 12, Homono. Tackled by the New Zealand defence. But another mistake we saw, and to Tonga to their credit. Driving hard, Marcelo. Good position there. This Tongan side. See the, the white line of, of the New Zealand try earlier there. Good drive here, Lee Hansen, great ball! Lee Hansen into Willie Wolgram! for the first get try of the game. Tonga take the lead with a super try from Willie Wolfgram of some powerful play from Lee Hansen. 
To be honest, they've been littered, littered with mistakes in the last three or four minutes, and Tonga have capitalised. We mentioned about the experience in the New Zealand team. It's now where it has to become brought in by the likes of, uh, of, of um, Iro, settle his troops down, let's say, let's keep the ball, let's retain possession and try and put some pressure on the opposition in Tonga. Keeney, black one on the inside, tackled by Hansen, eventually. That's it. See the hero down the blind side. Oh, a sloppy pass yet again. Which could result in a try, if not, not mistaken, he's given the try. Number two for New Zealand, Sean Hoppy has picked up a try to nothing. And really, that try has pulled New Zealand back into the game at four points to six. Stacey Jones teasing this defence, bringing Pongi on the angled run. Ball inside, Stephen Kearney running well. Matthew Ridge in support, Henry Powell there. He's here, Stacey Jones, outside there. Tony Kent try on the outside. The Tongan defence finally cut to shreds by this New Zealand attacking machine. It was a tongue and defence on the left-hand side that really lost the way here. Uh, the ball was switched back inside. Once again, the New Zealand players keep it alive. Comes out through Matthew Ridge. Henry Paul lets the ball go, lets the ball go out, and it's a score in the corner for New Zealand. Yes, yeah, good play here. They tidied the position up well. Stacey Jones, two-on-one situation to the supporting Kemp. He's having a busy game, this, this player, Joe. Yeah, they're keeping the ball alive now, New Zealand. They want another try just before the half-time interval. Henry Paul in, out, stepping inside there. Quintin Pongia looking to unload. Driving hard, so it's New Zealand. Looking to get some more points on the board. Fifth tackle, down the blind side. Tony Kemp, short pass there. Richie Blackmore, try for New Zealand. Richie Blackmore opening his account from a super pass from Tony Kemp. Switching on the blind way, man. Dummy inside, pass outside. Still retaining it. Little, little right times the passing, but they've still got it. Six tackle. Little chip over the top. It's fumble at number three. It's a try. A try there by Tofa. A fumble by the New Zealand defence has resulted in Tofa. And that try has pulled Tonga straight back into this game at 10 points to New Zealand's 12 but with the conversion to come, possibly on level terms. Gutenthal driving hard. One or two swinging arms here and there, but nothing to the displeasure of... Uh, and it's a kick through here for Vakos. He may have scored! He may have scored from that super kick through in the corner. So, Willie Wolfgang comes away, gets the ball away. The first touch here. Driving hard. Big, powerful centre, this fellow, Joe. Yes, Ellis did nothing wrong. He's had a good, steady game, but I think they just wanted to make that change and uh, put a fresh legs on. Quite a bit of fresh tackling there, I would have said, Joe. But uh, the Tongan guys aren't lying down by any stretch. Uh, Masala driving hard, and New Zealand caught offside. Quintin Pongia. Feeling the wrath of uh, referee David Campbell, and this may give an opportunity for Asi Amon to go for goal. So, Amon, this time, gets the ball through, straight through the middle of the post. The Tongan bench celebrates in true fashion, and that puts the score out to 16 points to Tonga, 12 for New Zealand. And his substitute, Fino, picking up his loose pass, Fino into the corner! Fino for Tonga has scored, he's picked up a loose pass from the New Zealand team, the bench go wild, we may have a major upset on our hands here with Tonga. The underdogs from the South Pacific taking on mighty New Zealand and currently leading 20 points to 12. Come on, can he convert the try? He does! Fantastic conversion from the corner. Asa Amon from Halifax. And he has tagged on two points 
for this marvellous Tongan performance in the second half. Another mistake from New Zealand here, from the dropout under their own post, they kick the ball straight into touch. A dreadful mistake, and that'll result in a penalty to Tonga in front of the post. They must surely now take the two points. He set them on for Tonga to push the score out for 24. He does! No problem. A Samoan, the Tongan bench celebrates. A Samoan of the Halifax club pushes the scoreline out to a scoreline that we wouldn't have dreamt of at this stage of the game. Tonga 24, New Zealand 12, with 10 minutes left. Kearney stepping off his left foot. Namu again into number two. Sean Hoppy probing, weaving on the 22 metres. New Zealand. Chasing the game here now. Stacey Jones up the blind side, throws one out the back door, collected by Namu. Henry Paul in possession. Pass to Matthew Ridge on the break. Matthew Ridge reach off the scene, he scored! A great break from Matthew Ridge on the outside. Here it is now, the replay of the kick, the conversion after the penalty. The great kick there from Matthew Ridge. Richie Blackwell, acting out by infield. Namu, Jones. Henry Paul in the thick of action. Basketball pass, Sean Hopper. We're now inside the last minute of normal time. Kevin Arrow weaving his magic. Number three, Richie Blackmore pushes him off. Richie Blackmore is in for a try. Richie Blackmore has pulled some points back for New Zealand here in the corner. Could we be seeing our first draw here in this World Cup? Henry Paul again keeps the ball alive, puts it out wide to the wingman. Richie Blackmore is in support. It's Kevin Iroh, little shimmy. Richie Blackmore. I thought he should have passed inside there, keeps the ball himself, and crashes over. And Matthew Ridge, the pressure kicker supreme from the Manly Club in Sydney, has kicked the goal, the conversion to make it 24 all. We're now in the 80th minute of this game, and New Zealand have, looks like grabbed a draw from the jaws of defeat, and it's this man, Henry Paul, producing some magic, keeping the ball alive. And Hoppy, combination, Hoppy, Iro, and Blackmore has pulled the game back, his second try of the game. He had to get round him on, he brushed him off, and those vital yards near the post for Matthew Ridge to pull the game back. So at 24 all, what a match have we seen? This massive crowd at Warrington has witnessed tonight. So New Zealand, are they about to chase the game? Chase, chase the, the game round. Big hit there from uh, Marcelo again. Unrelenting defence from Tonga. It's Henry Paul in the background calling the shots there, calling the wide ball. He wants to run at them and win this game. He's not content with the draw. Yes, Henry Paul has had a major influence in this time here. And it's number 11 there. Taking it through, Tony Iro. Back to half by Iru. They're looking at the yards here to try and get the yardage for a drop goal. They might have Ridge here at the back to have one last goal for a drop goal. Namu looking to switch down the blind. Kevin Arrow outside, outside the defence. Barnett on his debut. Back to Namu, probing, weaving, throwing another one. But that pass hits a Tongan player. And by David Campbell's sign has gone back to one. They surely must go for the one point here. Well, they're going for the try on the left. Kevin Arrow. Five yards from the line, five yards from the line. What can New Zealand do? Tongan defence. Henry Paul, the, mag the magician, he's been there within drop goals, striking range. I would guess Ridge or one of those players. Matthew Ridge forced him off, plenty of time. He scored the drop goal. Matthew Ridge has saved the game for New Zealand with his conversion just a couple of minutes ago. And the vital drop goal on his left foot that has taken this game to 25 points, to 24 in New Zealand's favour. And this Tongan side, in the 82nd minute, have conceded a point. The Cuscots in the game. That's the experience from New Zealand. They just two the play downfield, step by step, set for the drop goal with Ridge. And one point that turns it into two points for New Zealand because they'll take the two points from this game at the last dying stages, that must be disheartening for Tonga. 
Matthew Ridge, your New Zealand captain, some game, some excitement, Matthew. Yeah, I guess we uh, turned it on for the crowd, but it's a little bit too close for my liking, that's for sure. But uh, full credit to Tong. We knew they were going to play tough and hard, and I, uh, I really think they played above themselves. And, you know, probably a little bit unlucky to lose in the end, but uh, we'll take the win. Yeah, Philip Howlett of Tonga said they were playing on emotion. Did you get that impression? They yeah, certainly did. Um, when they were up by 12 points, they were yelling out Tonga when they were on the fence, and they were really pumped. And, you know, we probably had our heads down for a while, but we never gave up. We had, uh, you know, 13 minutes to go, and we knew we could get back. And you know, full credit to our guys. We copped a lot of criticism, and we'll cop some after this one, but uh, at least we come away with the win. Yeah, what was the matter in the first half? You looked a bit careless, you looked a bit anxious. Yeah, well, like I say, we've, we've had a lot of pressure from back home, and... Uh, Probably deservedly so, but uh, the boys have fell a little bit, and, and we probably tried a little bit too hard, pushed the pass a little bit too much, and, and that was the same thing for the first 20 minutes of the second half. We really uh, were our own worst enemies, but you know, to our credit, we, we pulled it out. And... Well, the crowd clearly weren't very impressed. Were Tonga robbed, Gary? Yes, I think there was. Over the full 80 minutes, uh, they was by far the better side, and uh, in the end, for New Zealand, it was maybe the class of Iroh, Henry Paul and uh, the halfback John that got him out of that and the goal kicking off Matthew Ridge. I suppose we shouldn't be surprised that a, a, co a team coached by Mike McClellan is quite useful. Tonga were very good, we can see some of their action coming out. It was, they were very good, they've got four players there with uh, English football experience. Dwayne Man here, the hooker, just looks up and sees that the New Zealand winger Sean Hoppy standing a little bit flat, puts a lovely kick through for the for the winger there and this pick up here for a great try which took to uh, Tonga into the lead for the first time. Some of the tackling out there was uh, was quite awesome today, wasn't it? It was quite ferocious uh, when you saw the two teams uh, do the war dance before. You knew there was going to be plenty of big hits out there, and uh, you know I'm sure there's going to be uh, a few battered and uh, bruised bodies tomorrow morning. Now New Zealand, a side of, of great individuals, but they, they never seem to fulfil their potential as a team. That's right. They uh, you know they seem to lack a bit of concentration at certain times. They seem a little bit lethargic. But, uh, but on the day, they're a match for any side in this World Cup. Let's have a look at the drop goal that won it for New Zealand. They played to get into this position, didn't they? Yes, they did. Uh, a little bit fortunate earlier on because uh, you know, they've got a set of six, six tackles here um, from the referee with the ball tucked in uh, the Tongan player. But yeah, they said that we can see Matthew Ridge at the back there, making sure they're getting the right field position. There's a couple of new, new Zealand players coming around to play the ball. The third one comes in there in the front, uh, the front rower. Just making sure the pressure can't get on Matthew Ridge. Sets himself up nicely. Nice service from Actina. George Mann just trying to catch him, but tells him on his wrong foot, the left peg. Well, almost a good night for Tonga. Great entertainment, wasn't it, for the 8,000 crowd? It was great entertainment, and uh, it's great to see that uh, the crowd was out there at Wilderspoo, which gives the World Cup a massive encouragement, and also, too, with a big crowd at Wembley yesterday. Gary, thanks for the moment. Now, uh, Keithley might not be the most glamorous venue to host a match in the World Cup, but the town's Cougars are one of the most progressive clubs in the country. Today they got their reward for reviving interest in the game, the Group 1 match between Fiji and South Africa. Highlights coming up shortly, but first Bill Arthur reports on Keithley's big day. Diana Ross couldn't make it to Cougar Park, but the Fijian chorus could, as they gave a real South Pacific flavour to the second game of the World Cup. Around 5,000 curious Cougarites, plus South African and Fijian fans packed into the ground. There was even a Mexican supporter. Now, he must have been hoping for a place in the Emerging Nations competition. For a club that four years ago were almost down and out, hosting a World Cup round was a real tribute. I think it's brilliant. Um, it shows what they've done over the last couple of years, going from like rags to riches type thing, and I think they deserve it. Lovely days, just like Fiji. Oh, <laughs> Keithley like Fiji. Yeah. Oh, no, no sunshine, no. Like That's it. Fiji. We're here to win. We're here women business. We're not here for, for just for playing games. Well, I'm a South African, but I've been in, in these parts for about 35 years. What about their chances? No idea, I didn't even know they played the game. <laughs> Keithley's public address man is used to dealing with names like Powell and Pinckney. Fiji presented a bigger linguistic challenge. Number nine, Ian Saga Ati 
seven Save and Kataga. Mike, Eight. Mike, can just interrupt your rehearsal of the Fijian team names. This is a great day for Keithley Cooper, isn't it? Oh, it's marvellous. Uh, the sun's shining. Uh, the only thing wrong is these names. <laughs> Trying to get these right, but it's a wonderful time for Keithley, and it's on the world stage. 60 million people watching over the moon. It was the day Yorkshire met the South Pacific. Bill Arthur reporting everyone in good form down there. Well, both sides have a good rugby reputation, but the South Africans were clearly the underdogs against the exciting Fijians. Let's get straight on with the action from Cougar Park. There was a carnival atmosphere at Keithley, with the South Sea Islanders intent on enjoying themselves. The teams and the tries with Ray French and Steve Sims. Good crowd assembling here at uh, Cougar Park. Many hundreds waiting to uh, to come in to look at these two teams, and I think we could have a look at them ourselves. The Fijians with a wealth of experience in Australian-based players, Philomone Seru, Noah Nayathkalau and Ian Sangaitu, could trouble the Rhinos up front with a powerful ball-handling pack, but one who we should be looking out for, Canberra Raiders wing, Noah Nandruku. He topped the Australian try-scoring list with 22 tries a couple of seasons ago. And South Africa field a very big pack of forwards. They'll be relying very much on that uh, number eight there, Gideon Watts, and strong running prop, Yako uh, Boyson. And behind, watch out for Guy Kumbi from the Durban Sharks League Club and Mark Johnson, the Rhinos' main strike force. He's one of the leading wingers in the rugby league over here with Workington no, Town up there, there in Cumbria. Many of these uh, Fijians, again, recent uh, converts from... Uh, from Union, many playing with local clubs like the Nadi uh, Dragons, but others playing with Australian clubs. And a good charge there by County Balu, driving towards the line, put down, good defence. One of the local players with the Eagles club there in Fiji. Fiji moving it out wide now, good pass on the outside there. Oh, and the fullback, Sabo Tambua, nips in for the first try. Super. Tambua. Keeping this ball moving wide, troubling the bigger, heavier South African uh, forwards. This time, Tanya tries to put the uh, prop Kumbu away. Certainly making uh, light of this uh, uphill struggle. A difference of four feet and drop in this pitch, just five meters from the uh, from the line. Another stray pass picked up by Sofa Tambua. Oh, he gets away there on the outside. Cutting inside, is he on his, uh, on his back? <laughs> Looks like uh, Nandruku. No, Nandruku, the Canberra Raiders uh, wingman. Still opening it out, still trying to move these heavier... Uh, South African forwards around, oh, good movement there by the wingman, Daku Itania, pass inside, it's Nandruku, linking up, oh, what a good tackle, tremendous tackle there from Alkama, try saving tackle, but it's still in the Fiji, on the attack, going for the line, and Tanya's in, and the of course. But it's Fiji, oh, good, long, superb pass out there to Mariawa, Mariawa cuts inside, to Seru, and Seru is over for a magnificent try. Tonga driving in now. Two good runs by uh, by the forwards. But once again, it's this half-back combination of Tanya and uh, Nayatakalao who are calling the shots in midfield, just on the South African 20-meter line. Across, full back. Oh, beautiful switch. Sobatambua coming in. Has he got the sidestep? No, but they put uh, Mariawa in. For a try, good slick handling again between those uh, Fijians. It was all started by Sovatambua and uh, finished off there in fine style. But it's uh, Fiji now on the attack. They've got an overlap on this uh, left hand side. It's Tanya again trying to move that ball out. Nayata Kalau out to Tonga. Tonga inside to Marayawa. Marayawa held her out wide. Good defence there, scrambling defence by the uh, by the Rhinos. Tanya again 
Is it picked up? Yes, it is. Oh, good slip pass there to Sangay too. And he's in. Little shimmy for Chuk over the line. Big smile on his face. And hard-working uh, hooker, Sangay too from North Sydney. In for a try. Still, these uh, Fijians keep coming, running uh, forward. Wainy Drawer. And the substitutes really coming into the game now. Salu Salu, all three substitutes handling the ball there. That's good play, taking the pressure off the, the lads who are uh, a little tired. There is one who isn't tired, Tongya. Oh, good move there by uh, Seru on that far side. Oh, he's just uh, managed to uh, get it down there. The South African defender looks for some support by uh, for Mr Manson, but I'm afraid it's not uh, coming. And Philomone Seru in again at the corner. Driving in, this time a superb run there by uh, Manny Drua. They're lined up out the left there. Tanya drives it across. Nayata Kalau. Oh, a beautiful ball there. And Baisoro. And Baisoro's in. Superbly taken by the, uh, the substitute. The crowd absolutely delighted and enthralled by the quick handling of the uh, these batties as they're known. Tanya just uh, held up. South Africa still tackling. The short pass. Oh, he flicks through. Sabatungua in there again. It was that short pass there on the burst. The fullback reading the situation from the Panthers club in Fiji. Sabatungua in again. Tremendous run there, him. tremendous run by Elise Tonga. Number two, every time he runs, he leaves South Africans lying on the floor. And here they are, coming through now. Oh, striding away. Dekui Tonga going for the line. He's in the corner. Wonderful effort, straight from their own line. They're so fast, they are so strong, these, uh, these Fijians. Graham, that is some start to Fiji's World Cup campaign. You must be delighted. It's been a big build-up for the boys, and I think they're just dying to play a game of football. And they showed today what entertainers they are. Did that exceed your expectations today? Probably did a little bit, because a lot of the boys haven't played together, but they haven't played for a long time. We seen it yesterday with the Australians, who they struggled, but uh, today the boys just kept coming at them. It took them maybe a while to hit their, their best form, didn't it? Certainly for the first half hour, it was nip and tuck. It was, and at 10-6, you know, I wasn't completely happy, but the boys knew their answers at half-time just to control the ball and see where the gaps uh, turn up and, and take them, and they did. Is that the only way they know how to play? Yeah, they give you a bit of heart failure at times, but that's the way they play football, and there's no way I'm going to stop it. And who would want them to? Uh, you must have been impressed with the Fijians, Gary. Oh, very impressed. Uh, the catching, passing, the support play was quite breathtaking at times, and, uh, you know, they're sure they've got plenty of pace, and... As what people will say, I'm sure the Fijians are going to be tagged the entertainers of this World Cup. They seem naturals for rugby league, don't they? We can see some of the action coming up now. Oh, they do absolutely. And I say uh, some of the uh, say the catching passing here, you know, just running the angles. Lovely pass there from Martin Half, and again two lovely passes coming onto the ball and the side tip just around the full back, just leaving him for dead there. And you can see the happiness on on the full back's face. But uh, you know the the best taking try to score was just quite sensational. I'm sure the crowd at Keighley enjoyed the afternoon there. Have England got a lot to fear? They play them later in the tournament. I'm um, sure they will do. Yeah, I'm sure the, uh, we saw John Johnny there just for a short while. But uh, yeah, they've got to make sure that the defence is tight. I know the defence is going to be a lot different for Fiji playing England against South Africa. But yeah, England can't take them too lightly. Well, let's have a look at a little bit more action because uh, the South African defence at times was woeful, wasn't it? Oh, it was. Yes, and this came from the from the kick off. But here, the Fijian just rounds the full back. He was a bit stranded. But just look at the power and, and the pace, the guy. And, I say England can't take Fiji too lightly. They'll make sure that uh, you know they'll prepare for Fiji as well. They were preparing against Australia. There was a lot of controversy about taking a World Cup match to Keighley. <coughs> was it justified? Do you think that they went there? I think it was. If uh, if you saw the the crowd there, they, they were there in many thousands, and uh, people who were some South Africans who didn't even know South Africa played rugby league. So yeah, it's great encouragement for the game, and uh, it's been worthwhile taking it to Keighley today. Okay, Gary. Thanks a lot.
Buenas tardes.